Hello and welcome in RCF with the part 3 of the video tutorial about the new release of RDNet 3.0. In this part, we'll go working in online mode as it happens most of the time on the field. We have two ways to work online. The first is starting from an already done project, like the one we did before, making sure that the wiring on the field matches the wine designed offline. The second way is starting from an empty workspace. We will do both. Let's start from the first. So, let's open the project previously saved and now we have to discover for the controller that is connected via Ethernet. So, press the controller's button in the toolbar and discover for the controller. The controller found will appear in the found controller window. As you can see, there are the name and the IP address we gave it before. By pressing match, we add the controller to our workspace. Close the controller window and click scan. This command, in this case, compares what is found in the workspace to what is really present. This function can lead to four different results. The first and the most common is an object on the workspace corresponds to the one found in the network. The physical devices corresponding to the workspace objects found and this symbol is added to the object. All is working without error messages. The next three situations are the product of possible mistakes and can happen on the field. Let's see the behavior of the software in these cases. Workspace object has not been found in the network. For example, turn off the HDL50 number 5 in the right cluster and press online. This is the second situation that can happen. It is not possible to find the network device that corresponds to the workspace object or the device is switched off, like in our case. This symbol is added to the object and the icon of the object becomes blue. Now, if we go offline by pressing the online button, this symbol is added to the icon that means that the device is not present. To solve the problem, we have to discover the reason for the disconnection, fix it and press scan again. Now I'll connect an HDL30A in the position previously occupied by the HDL50A that we turned off. Let's scan and see what happened. We'll be in the following situation in which the workspace object is different from the one found in the network. In the network, there is a device with the proper ID, but is a different model. For instance, if the workspace object with ID 125 is an HDL50A and in its place an HDL30A has been found, this error is indicated by this symbol added to the object. Point the mouse on this symbol to see a text box with the name of the detected model. In this case, to solve the problem, we have to select the HDL30A found, right-click in the object and select Switch to Register it to change the Synoptics project with the new device found. Now, let's reconnect the HDL50A instead of the HDL30A in its position in the chain and rescan to come back in the right situation with all the devices matched within the workspace. The problem seen above will reappear because now the HDL50A is found where we add an HDL30A. As we have done before, select the icon and from the advanced menu switch to registered. Another situation that can happen can be as follows. A detected device in the network is not present in the workspace. Let's connect the CAT5 cable incoming in the line 1 of the control 8 and plug it in the line 5. Press scan.
an aspective device is linked to the network in a wrong position or a controller port that had to remain unused has been connected. If so, the new device is listed in the Matched Plus window. Now we can add the devices found and we have a new left cluster wired in the line 5 of the control 8. It could work, but we have to delay the previous one and also all the work we did offline, as grouping, equalization, advancing function, etc., will be lost. For this reason, it is better to delay the new cluster found on line 5 and reconnect the incoming line 5 in the line 1 of the control 8. So come back in the situation without mistake and click Scan. The physical device corresponding to the workspace, but we are offline, as you can see in the right bottom part of the main window. Indeed, the Scan command always ends in offline mode. This because using Scan means that there are not all the devices that we need yet. So we have to connect them, scan for them, till by pressing scan several times we reach the right number of speakers in the right position, properly wired and matched with the workspace. Obviously, in most situations where mounting and wiring has been done correctly, after just one scan command we already have the project matched to the speakers. That's our case, so now we can go online. Now it is possible to edit all the parameters of each device in real time and start tuning using the advanced function of RDNet. But before do it, let's consider the most common situation that we find working on the field in the real life. It is setting and wiring the system without any synoptic project done before. It means start RDNet software with an empty project when all the speakers are connected and turned on. In this case, the work is really fast because we have just to find the controller, match it with the workspace, then simply press Quick Start. This command corresponds to the execution of Scan and then Online. The command Quick Start is available only when the workspace is empty. As we can see, we have all the objects. Left cluster, right cluster, subwoofer, front fill, but without order. Now we have to work to build the synoptics with Sense, doing all the steps that we'll need to manage the system, adding functions, groups, etc. As we'll see in the next part of these videos. We can say that an experienced user can finish the setting of a system like this in about 10-20 minutes, not more, including tuning. This is one of the great benefits that we have using RDNet. In situation in which we work with devices coming from different rental companies could happen that not all the devices have the same firmware. The software, after the scan or quick start command, will detect that in this case the HDL58 with address 113, that means that the third speaker in the left cluster is not up to date and must be updated. It is crucial working with RCF speaker with RDNet to work always with all the boxes with the same firmware and possibly up to date. This notice means that the firmware of this speaker is not up to date and it must be updated. To do it, select the speaker or a group of speakers, go in the advanced menu, firmware upgrade, select the proper folder, in this case HDL50, select the firmware and click open. The firmware is uploading. During this procedure, it is important to be sure that the speakers stay on. A power outage during the upgrade process could irreparably damage the speaker. After the upgrade process, the speaker automatically reboot and RDNet will go offline. To re-establish the connection, simply return online by pressing the proper button in the toolbar. 
We can check for the firmware release of the devices by opening the extended parameters looking at the bottom left part of the window. Another situation that would happen after a quick start or online command is as follows. This notice means that the speaker have been found correctly but have a different setting compared to the project of RDNet. This is a really common case because at the end of a show normally we turn off the speaker without resetting the parameters, so the next time we'll use the system it will keep the same setting of the last show. By pressing Synchronize, RDNet will send at the speaker the setting of the project. It is really useful when we come back several times in the same venue. Saving the RDNet project and synchronize it with the speaker, we can recall the settings in 10 seconds, achieving the right setting for the show without losing time. In our case, in order to be sure to start with a factory default situation, I suggest after the scan and online command to press default or go in the advanced menu in which we'll find the same command. This is a broadcast command that is independent from the selected boxes. Now all the speakers are in factory default conditions and we can start working. Note that if you have a synoptics with some settings, function, etc., by setting default values all these settings will be lost. I would like to remind you that these videos does not include all the features and capability of the software. For that, I invite you to download and read the manual of RDNet 3.0. The purpose of these videos is to give to the user an idea of how the software is used in the field by a PA manager or a sound engineer. Well, that's all for now. See you in the next part with the advanced functions and the system tuning. Thank you for viewing. Bye-bye.